Hello 8th graders, this video is to get you started on the conclusion section of your science fair project. For this section you are going to be getting um, quite a bit of work crammed into this one little document. This is a significant portion of the science fair grade. It's actually worth 20%, same as the procedure. Um, so it is pretty important section of the science fair to make sure that you are getting correct, uh, getting it done correctly. For this section, just like all the others, there is a uh, rubric and instruction guide which is on the blue piece of paper that you got in class. It's actually right underneath the IOD instructions and it takes up most of that packet. So in the conclusion section there are actually four paragraphs that are going to show up and so it's that's what makes it so long is there's a lot of stuff. But the good news is is that most of the conclusion is in a way kind of copied and pasted from other sections that you've already done. Not literally copied and pasted, but the, the ideas are going to come from other sections. So most of the work has actually been already done by you. You're just kind of summarizing everything. So I'm going to go section by section and show you what needs to show up and show you in an example as well. In the very first paragraph, you're going to be talking about the purpose and procedure and hypothesis. So um, it's got multiple parts within this paragraph. Your first sentence should summarize the purpose, and sometimes this is the hardest part for students um, because they, they're thinking like, well, I chose it because I had to. But the purpose is like, what was your goal of your experiment? What were you trying to find out? The second sentence is going to summarize your procedure, and I do mean sentence. You should not ramble on and on about first I did this and then I did that. You just need to basically boil everything that you did down into a sentence, maybe two. And I'll show you an example again in just a second. Uh, the third sentence, we're up to now just the, just three sentences in, are going to talk about what the variables were. So the IV was, the DV was, and the controlled variables were. And you have to have at least three, but if you have had more than that, that's great. You should definitely list, if you have like a really long list of control variables, don't list them all. Just pick like the top three most important to your experiment. And then the fourth sentence in this paragraph, summarizes what you predicted. So this is just straight copy and paste. You're going to go back to your prediction and paste it right into there. In paragraph two, you're going to summarize your results and it's kind of like going back to your IOD. So it should say basically like what happened was and, and give us an idea of the outcome. Again, just like from the ID, don't list every bit of data, just the highlights. This should not be copied and pasted. This should be like a rephrasing of what you did in the IOD, kind of even more boiled down from there. And then state whether or not your hypothesis was supported. Remember, hypotheses are not right or wrong, they're just supported or not. Um, so this, this paragraph is actually kind of short because you're um, basically restating a couple of things in shortened uh, text from what you've already done. The third paragraph is going to be kind of lengthy. The third paragraph is going to have your source of errors, mistakes, and changes for next time. This is actually one of the paragraphs where judges are going to spend most of their time considering how well you did your project. Not a, a good science fair project is not one that was perfect. It's one that you clearly understand well. So if your science fair project just uh, everything went wrong, all of your plants died, or just everything imaginable that could go wrong did go wrong, that doesn't make you out of the running. Quite to the contrary, if you are a good scientist, you are somebody who can identify what your errors were, what your mistakes were, what the differences between those were, and more importantly, how would you change it? So no experiment is perfect, a good scientist figures out what's wrong with it. So I'm going to go through that in the example in just a second. Then the last paragraph is practical applications. Sometimes this is a little bit long too, it depends on what your experiment is, is about. Sometimes they're very short, it's, it's dependent. But this is kind of like revisiting the SOP and it brings your entire project full circle. So you started with the SOP and you kind of end with the SOP. This is the last paragraph of your conclusion. So this tells people um, how is your information useful? How could you research it further? What, what, what additional things could you do to like continue learning more about the topic? Not necessarily like how would you change your experiment, but what else could you do to learn more about the topic? Um, and then this is also the place where you're going to make some inferences like, well, because my data showed this, this is what it might mean on, the bigger, on a bigger scale. So now let's talk about some examples. Again, I'm going to go back down to the student example down here in the conclusion. And um, you should definitely read through this because the conclusion is a lot of stuff and uh, missing things in your conclusion is a silly way to lose some points. So what I would recommend that you do is you go through and find each sentence just like I did in the IOD 
find each sentence that meets the requirements and kind of highlight them and color code them for what they did or what the requirements were up at the top. Um, but this is a great example. It doesn't have to look identical to this. For example, when you talk about your sources of error and mistakes, it doesn't have to be bulleted. But um, it's going to look just like this. One of the things that I do want to talk to you about is the difference between error and mistake. So sources of error are things where you did the experiment the right way, but um, something got in the way of gathering good data. Oftentimes, sources of error are things like human error. Like, well, the procedure said to check the, check the liquids for when they're frozen, but because it's human error, uh, the human eye is not great at finding the differences in, in ice. Whereas a mistake is something like you spilled something. It's sloppy. So error is you did everything you could to do it right, but your, your tools weren't accurate enough. Or there's human error somewhere and you've identified it. And a mistake is you were just messy or you forgot something or you mismeasured something. Um, but again, if you have these, and every experiment has these, but if you have them, it doesn't make your experiment bad. Identifying them and being able to talk about how it impacted your data that's what makes you a good scientist. Um, the last sentence, or excuse me, the last paragraph um, should be about this length. You should be talking again about what it means for people. Like why is it important that um, your research got done? Oftentimes, a lot of experiments that I see for science fair didn't turn out very well, and the data that you collected was kind of a, a mixed bag of random numbers. If that's the case, that doesn't again make your experiment bad, but if you can sit down and think about, well, maybe if I had done my procedure this way or changed it this way or remembered to do this control variable, then I might have been able to figure out how it helps and then remember back to whatever you said um, the experiment was going to help back in your SOP. So, for example, the per this person wrote about city governments thinking about what salt to put on their roads in the winter time, and so they're they're circling back to what they did in their SOP. So after you have read through, and I know it's a lot, but it's going to definitely be worth your time. After you've read through this conclusion and figured out where they, what sentences they wrote that meet what requirements up in the requirements section, you're going to have a really good sense about how to start your own conclusion. But you should definitely not do that until you have read through and uh, done a little research in this example.